everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, I'm super excited about this project because one year ago I talked to Sigurd Bjerkov if I can recreate his masterpiece that he made this wooden piece into bubble wrap and it was really awesome to see. I did the similar thing uh, in my own way. He's happy for me to share it so I'm really happy that I could share this tutorial with you just before the end of the year. We reached 9,000 this year. I'm incredibly excited for launching my Patreon as well and a lot of people decided to support me there. Uh, so if you want more uh, stuff like uh, this, also my materials, then I highly encourage you to check out my Patreon. Without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start by opening bridge and we're going to import our trusty old branch. I'm going to go into my local and I'm just going to locate the old tree branch. Also going to make sure that I'm not going to use node material for presets. So I'll switch it off and I'll just import it. Now when it's imported, I can turn it back on because when I create materials, I like to create node materials and I also can press shift C and convert all the materials to nodes confirm that and then there is this second option so convert and replace and now even this material is node material right now so if i open it i see there is this wooden texture this roughness map this normal and there's bump and this displacement i'm just gonna take this displacement a little bit down and drag this wooden material here and when to highlight all of those nodes that are related to the material i can then press ctrl g and write wood and now I've created scaffold that basically says everything inside is related to that wooden material. And when I move the scaffold, it all goes with it. So it's very nice to keep things tidy. And I'm going to turn on the IPR and also increase the focal length to 130 and click on our asset and then press R and rotate by dragging down like this and just have that asset some sort of this way. I'm going to create backdrop just by clicking backdrop, you can call it the shift C and write backdrop and it's going to be there. So I'm just going to drag the backdrop down. I'm going to click on it and extend, you know, to 500 or so. And I'm also going to increase that rounding just so it's kind of nicely leads. And I'm going to drag it into my scene and this I'm going to drag into my objects, create light, which is dome light drag it into my lights and a straight away, I'm going to go to my 3D assets HDRI and apply Canada Montreal. I'm going to go to coordinates of that dome light. I'm going to rotate it just so it's coming from the side and increase it to like one. So I'm going to decrease the saturation. I'm going to post the link to this HDRI in the description so you can follow along with this exact light. With this basic lighting, we are able to judge uh, what is happening and I'm going to open up this material, just go into note editor. So show note editor. I have this wooden material here and save project, please. Now that we saved, let's look into the actual technique. So we're going to be using two different materials and we're going to be blending between them using vertex map. So let's do the base of this setup. When we have the note editor open, I'm going to double click and create new standard material. And with this standard material, I'm just going to make it purple because purple is live. And I'm also going to create material layer. And with the material layer, I'm just going to plug it into our surface and then connect these two materials to that layer. Material layer node is great for blending two materials based on, you know, specifics that you set on that node. So I'm just going to plug the wood output of that wood into the base material color. So that's going to be our base. You can see immediately that the wood is back. And now if I plug the purple material that we just created into layer one, it's basically override that material because if I click on material layer node, it's blend type over. So this means that wooden material is the base and we overlay this purple material over that and that final output goes to the surface. Essentially, we have the other options to here, like do additive mode or combine. So it kind of combines the wooden texture and the purple and kind of averages that output. So we'll leave it in our over and we create different condition for blending because we can create vertex map that will be driving that material transition and also our displacement. So we're going to create node vertex attribute and we put output color into the material layer, layer one as a mask. So this way we know that vertex attribute now controlling how 
the purple material will be laid over. And the way we can do it, we just click on our three and we just create vertex map. I have the vertex stack automatically in, you know, in my panel here, I've created this custom panel um, just so I can quickly click stuff that I use often. Now you can find it in other tags, vertex map. So you click vertex map and once it's here, you can click on use field. And when you use field, you have freeze layer automatically here. I usually delete it, but today is actually a day we're going to talk about freeze layer. Only thing I'm going to create is spherical field and the spherical field automatically becomes the child object that you create the field for. So if you click it and go back to the move tool, you will see the handles are perfectly match with that axis of that wood. Now I can shift. So we see half of each and now we can see the red one is going to be zero and the yellow one is going to be one. So these values will be driving our material transition. If we go into the material layer, we're going to see that the vertex attribute needs attribute name. We're going to place it here and now material layer knows how to use that vertex attribute because we have it assigned and we also specified in our vertex stack that spherical field will be driving it. Now let's talk about freeze layer. Freeze layer has this mode and you can set it to grow. I'm just going to go from the beginning. Also, we need to set it to normal. So freeze in normal mode. Uh, in normal blending and mode is grow, then we see that it automatically grows. We don't have to move even our spherical field. It's just going to be driving our starting position of that transformation. And now I can go to that freeze and change the radius to maybe one centimeter. This will slow down the progression. And we can see that now it's essentially going slower and creating soil of organic growth. Now I can change how big that spherical field is. So I simply go to the spherical field and change the size, maybe to 30. Now I'll press E and move it back to that beginning. I'm just going to look at the back. So I'm just going to highlight this little piece. And then we see that slow growth over. Now, if I look at the material now, I can see that my purple material grows over the wooden material. It has no properties yet, but we can maybe go even a little bit closer. So I'm just going to move this camera now a little bit closer just so we can look at it properly. And let's open up the material again. Now we have the material in and we're going to have displacement for the wood. And we also going to have displacement for the purple material. So I just kind of duplicate this just so we can use the node structure. And I'm going to type in blender. I call it displacement blender and put the first displacement of the wooden material into the layer zero. So that's the input layer zero and put it into displacement. The output of the second displacement we put into layer one input. So we have two inputs, layer layer zero input and layer one input, and they both have displacements, but both textures are same. So I'm just going to change this texture to different texture. And I have this foam texture. So I'm just going to use displacement for this foam texture and nothing changed because we don't know how to drive it again. So displacement blender doesn't know how, so I can use this vertex output color from that attribute that we used for our layer and just find this in our displacement blender. And we see in layer one, it's our blend weight. So if I apply it, this will then get applied to our blend weight. So I can go into my redshift tag and go into the geometry override and activate displacement. Now this will activate displacement. So we actually finally see some lines, but these textures are too small. So I'm going to bring in absolute load and this node can connect to my displacement texture. So I'll just plug it into general UV remap and remap scale. So I want to scale it more. So I'll scale it maybe four times. And now I see I'm driving different displacement over just the part that it's purple and just contains this material. Everything else keeps the same wooden texture. And this way we can transform objects into completely different materials with different displacement, different feel. And I'm going to actually improve that purple material. I'm going to reduce the shininess. So I'm just going to increase roughness here. So we see something like this. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'll just bring in texture. 
and plug it into my roughness actually. And I can still use that same sprinkle insulation reflection roughness. So I'll get some sort of roughness just so it's not so blunt. And I'll copy that texture over, just control drag and bring in bump map, bump and plug it into bump and this plug it together and change this to the normal map. I also need to make sure in the bump map, I'll change the height field to normal map because we plug in the purple one. So you always remember to change it to normal. Now we change it to normal. It's a little bit too much. So 0.1 should be fine for us. The next thing we should do, we should change color space for our roughness, for our texture. You don't have to change for our diffuse, but if I highlight both of those nodes and change color space with file in input output, to raw, then this would get properly mapped as a raw texture. And same goes for this displacement. We'll change it to raw. It's already raw because we copied it over. So that's fine. Now we know the nodes are properly inputted and we're driving it properly. So this is interesting. We finally got some sort of growth and thanks to freeze, it's kind of automatic. It's just going to grow naturally like that. So now that we successfully growing different material on this tree branch, we can also apply cloth simulation. So I'll apply cloth tag and I'm just going to reset this. And this cloth tag will have mixed in animation with pins and we're going to drag the vertex map as well there. So it will be using this vertex map and I need to create some sort of simulation. So I'm just going to go into field force and go as a random field, go into object of that field force so now we bring in some force to drive our cloth simulation. So I'm just going to go to simulate forces and field force. Let's click on field force, go to object, go to random field and increase it to 280. Now I'm essentially driving and I can't see it properly, but I'm going to just press this dot twice and I just kind of remove it. And now I'm driving those certain parts that get affected by cloth simulation. So I essentially gonna get this foam moving. Now let's improve it a little bit. It's nice, it's moving, but what we need to do, we look into balloon, click on a balloon, activate this mode, increase the expansion time to 50 frames at least, just so it's slower. And we do overpressure of 1.5 for now. And let's have a look. I'm just gonna turn off the IPR for now. And we see that we're gonna get a little bit of a growth here. I'm just going to increase our simulation to 250 just so we get more time to work on that. I'm going to increase also some values in our surface. So I'm just going to maybe increase the target length, just make it long and increase the bendiness. We can have a look. So this is interesting shape. It's definitely helping that we have this sort of interesting texture. It's like a foam, so it will hide a lot of these imperfections, but we see we, we get some kind of imperfections here, even through that. So we can always go to that tessellation and just kind of turn it on. And this would get rid of these little imperfections. I kind of like this. So now we get this little growth with moving animation. So we get this organic look and feel which I absolutely love. And the last thing I would do, like when we see the movement, it's kind of liquidy. So we could go into our simulation settings. So press control D and you get into this project setting. So you click on simulation and you have a scene. So you see your gravity is zero. I have it by default zero. And you see the elements that you are using. I'm using the cloth with the balloon setting and the field force. And you have also time scale. So we can try if we can do time scale like 0.2. And you can see we slow down that jiggle a lot, which I think goes for much nicer animation. I love this. Now I have moved this spherical field a little away just so I can see only the wood and I will be working with the lighting. So before we wrap this up, let's put in area light and turn it 90 degrees. So minus 90, move it on the side, make it smaller. So I'm just going to make it like this. And I'm also going to reduce that exposure to like minus two. So I get this nice light and I'm going to change the color of that light. So color and temperature. And I'm just going to drag this temperature a little bit down just so I get this warm gold color on the wood. I can also reduce the spread to create sort of more directed light just so I get more highlights here, more darker. So this will create for much more interesting shape and 
I think this will also provide very nice kind of texture. As you can see that we improved immediately the look of this. And I'm just going to do one more thing. Then I'm just going to have another area light. I'm going to rotate it, have it from the other side. It's going to make it smaller and just push it to kind of create some sort of edge here. So I can even create target tag and drag this there just so I know I'm pointing at it and then have the spread I actually have the spread to zero which is interesting I think I copied that just over but I'm gonna have to move it slightly over here and just make sure the spread and the exposure is less so when I go back to my camera I get you know that light from the other side and we can either test color and temperature when we go colder and we push a little bit colder tone from the other side that could contrast or which is gonna stay which I think it's gonna happen and we right click this arrow this will make it default. We're just going to go into these warmer tones. Are we actually going to stay in that default value, which make it clean white? And I'm just going to reduce it even further. So I'm just going to keep a little bit of that. This exposed the wood like really nicely. What I think we need to do now is only let it render and have a look. So I'm just going to move this field back and I have this vertex map freeze layer turn off. So I just wanted to show you when you move it in, it's kind of stays and then when i move it back it's gone but if you have a freeze on when i move it back it's just gonna stay there because that freeze remember that position when you set it up and it's just gonna grow from there i can see actually this is overexposed here so we need to make sure that light from the left is not too much so we can reduce it a bit more i think this is nice and we can also go into that material and maybe look into that texture and bring in ramp it's a reflection roughness and we can play you know how rough it is just so it's not casting that many reflections okay this is almost like fabric so something like this and i really like it so i'm just gonna change this to 1920 because that's how we're gonna see it 1920 2080 i'm just gonna push my camera further back 